Hello, my fellow randoms. My name is XavierMan117, also known as Simon, and I'd like to welcome you back to Game Dev Tycoon. Before I start doing what I'm about to do, however, I'd like to point out that this is not gameplay. This is not a series, because no one's asked me to do a series, and I'm not about to do a series, but no one's asked me to, because generally that means people don't want to, or would rather not see it. Therefore, I want to do a video anyway, and here I want to share some knowledge that I have acquired. Please ignore any sounds you hear in the background. My blinds are extremely annoying sometimes. Anyway, let me get to the point. So this is a guide on how to make successful games in Game Dev Tycoon completely legit. No cheating, no hacking, nothing else. All you need is a little bit of information and a method. So I'm going to show you three web pages. Three web pages which are going to be displayed in the description. Feel free to visit them right now and look at them while I'm pointing them out. And they are, ignore Bandicam, uh, let me go to, here we go. These are three pages on the uh, Game Dev Tycoon Wiki. That is Game Development and Raw Data for um, review algorithms, as well as this picture of percentages for sliders. Now let me demonstrate how these are used. First of all, I'm going to finish this game here. So, I'm going to start with the slider percentages, and then I'm going to work my way up from there. Here we have Development Stage 2, Fantasy RPG. Allow me to go and look at what RPG says in Development 2. Here we go, it says 100% dialogues, 100% level design, and 20% AI. So you just have to judge how much of this bar is whatever percentage it says, and Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your auntie, you're done. And of course, ah, there you go, the other game which I made, Adventures in TARDIS, a time travel game, sold 638, sorry, 91,000 units and 638 dollars in sales, which is quite nice. Now as we get to the third development, the same principle applies. Simply move the sliders to the correct amount stated in the page, and Bob's your uncle, but there is more to it than that. I'm just going to finish this one, and then I'm going to show you. RPG, 100, 50, 20, okay? 100, 50, 20. That's about 20. Then once that's done, it's just a simple matter of ironing out the bugs and releasing it. Right, so now that we're done, I'm just going to iron out the bugs, and I'm going to show you how to make a successful game from the start. So finished, and we'll see. I will show you, right now actually, before I start showing you how to do a successful game, I will show you how well the slider has helped me. Now, I'll, I'll just show you first of all. There you go, new research is available. Reviews, reviews, here we go. First reviews for the newly released game. 10. 9. 10. And 10. So there you go. That game scored three tens and a nine. Now, it can't actually get a perfect ten on everything because it's a small game. It's actually built into the code. It is physically impossible. Try and try as much as you want, but it is physically impossible. So now I'm going to show you how to do a new game using these sorts of things. So, first of all, you want to pick any topic whatsoever. Any topic at all. We're going to go with space. Now. This is where we go to the internet and use the information. So let's first of all go to this page, the game development page, and look for a table that is here. Now this is single genre combos. This basically tells you all the good and bad combinations of any genre and any um, topic, that's the word I'm looking for. Now we're looking for space, so we need to look at all the things that work well with space. Action, simulation, and strategy all work well with space. So we're going to go with action for the sake of action, right? So now we go back to Game Dev Tycoon and we pick action. Now we know that no matter what we do, this is going to be a successful game because it is capable of getting above five. If a game is not a good combo, it will be physically impossible for it to get above five. And because your character is generally not that skilled, it will not get above four generally. If you have a good character, you can get it to be an average five, but it will not exceed that number. Get me? Good. So now we need to figure out what platform to put it on. And now this is where it comes in because we can go to the same page, game development, and we need to look at what uh, genres work well on what platforms. 
let's have a look here. So we can see the genre action, which is the one we're going for, fits well on the PC, the Govador 64, the Test, the Master V, the Game Lean, the Vena Gear, the Vena Oasis, Super Test, Test 64, etc, etc, etc. Now, it also fits very well on these systems here, the Play System, the Mbox, the PPS, the Mbox 360, and the Mbox Next. Now, we don't actually have any of these systems unlocked on this game, so we're going to go with something else. We're going to go with... Let's go with uh, Game Lean, for the sake of this, because I know where this one's going to go. Let's go with Game Lean, because if you have a choice between two things which equally is good, uh, go for the one which has the highest market share. So now, we need to figure out if this is a good choice. So we're going to go and check to see if... Oh, hold on, I've missed a step. We need to figure out... What is the target audience of our platform? So let's see. If we look at Young, we see that they like everything except the Vino Oasis. That's well fitting. The game link does not show up well fitting on everyone. In fact, it is a non fitting platform and it is also non fitting for Mature. So this has to be a Young game, correct? Good. So that means we know we can market it towards Young people. However, this is not necessarily the case because we don't know how the young audience likes the genre, not to mention the topic. So that's where we go into raw data, because this is the only place I've seen to do it. So what you're looking for is you are looking for topic audience combinations. So now you want to find the topic you've got, for example, space, and you want to see whether young, everyone, so everyone, and mature like or dislike the game. So as you can see here, they are all one, meaning that there is no negative multiplier for using it, meaning that we can use it on any audience we want. Right? Good. But we're not done yet, because now we need to see... Where is it? It's somewhere up here. And we need to see... What was it again? I've completely forgotten my train of thought. Ah, yes. We need to see how well the genre does with the audience. So let's go for genre... It's here somewhere. Um... Genre platform audience. Uh, actually, you know what? I've completely uh, made up a step. Apparently, genre does not matter for age group. Genre does not discriminate, meaning that action, adventure, RPG, simulation, strategy, casual, and MMO, the two that you can unlock, do not discriminate on age group. Correct? Good. So now I would like to point out that previously I've been doing a lot of experiments with this game. I've been using a really shitty engine. This is called the Racing Engine, which is essentially just the Simgen, because this is Sim Games, with a um, steering wheel compatibility. So it has nothing but the things that you can get in your very first custom engine. 2D graphics, mono sound, save game functionality, and linear story. Nothing more, nothing less. So we're going to call this Test Game, right? Pardon me, I'm drinking juice at the same time. So now, from this point on, is where it gets really simple. We've already figured out the hardest part to actually make a good game. We have the audience, we have the genre, we have the platform, and the engine is sort of a personal preference. Ideally, you want to have an engine which is capable of a whole bunch of things, so that you can actually pick and choose what you want. Now, we're going to go with 2D Graphics V2. Like I said, it actually has nothing more than 2D Graphics, even though I can research better graphics than 2D Graphics V2. The reason I'm going for 2D Graphics V2 is because it's cheap. Now, the funny thing is about engines, is when you get to small games with better engines, the more money you spend in them, the less money you're actually going to get back. It's the law of diminishing returns, and it applies here. This basically means that you can have the best graphics you want, but small games will not sell that much. You are going to spend a lot of money on these games and have very little return, if any. So therefore, you're going to want to go with cheap 2D or 3D graphics. So that's basically it. So let's just go with 2D graphics for the sake of this. Now, that's pretty much the basis of the game done. Now it's just dealing with the sliders, and the slider thing here, on this page here, will actually tell you everything you want to know. We are only doing a single genre game, so we don't need to worry about combined genre games. Let's go here. We picked an action game, correct? I believe we did. Yes, a space action game. So all you have to do is set the sliders to, as I said before, the numbers here. So we're going to do that, and we're going to see how it works. So engine needs to be about 75. That's about 75. Gameplay needs to be 100, fair enough, and story of memory needs to be 0. 
Now, the selected features here try and add bits that actually contribute to the game you're doing. So for example, this is an action game on the game link and therefore does not need a steering wheel. That's 5k you don't have to spend. And keep in mind that uh, engines and story quest things, even if you don't have a great focus on these, you can still put these in and actually help the game. However, the more things you put into the engine without actually having engine functionality, you will actually cause diminishing returns. If you see a 92% or whatever percent next to the engine, you know you are not uh, putting enough focus on that. So either you pull features out or you put more time into that degree. All right, so then we've already got that set. So all we have to do is just go. And as you can see, Fantasia, rank one, first week, nearly sold a million copies and it's making us a lot of money. So now let's go into stage two. Development for action is zero on dialogues. Level design is 100, that is also fair enough. And artificial intelligence is 75. Let's just pull that up to about 75, fantastic. And exactly the same for the, um, what do you call it? Uh, development stage three. All right, so now we're in development stage three. And with the selected features, this also applies to development stage two. The same goes. Think about what features your game needs and what features it doesn't. Don't worry about the sliders, let the uh, table do it for you. Stage three, world zero. Graphics 100 and sound 75. Seems fair enough. So as you can see, we've set that correctly. And then it's just a matter of, there you go. Surprise hit of the year. How, is, how simple was that? Uh, industry news, that is not important for what I'm trying to say here. Once again, also not important. So please allow me to continue my tutorial. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. This seems to be the end of the play system. Apologies, I just had to go check what my dog was barking at. Please ignore the chair moving sound. Alright, so at this point, it is literally just making sure you have uh, no bugs and then releasing it. There is a thing about the design versus the technology and the ratio at which they need to be done, but really it's more just about hiring the right people and the right balance of people and letting the sliders do the rest. Sometimes you will have to focus on improving these things, and in fact, if I go here, you will see that your ratio on the genre thing here, which I'm going to highlight, hopefully you can see that, I don't know if any camera caught that, you will actually see that it says, for example, action 1.8, meaning that the Technology to design ratio needs to be, the technology needs to be 180% of the design, if that makes any sense to you. So now we're just going to see how this game did, right? After we've done it, as you can see, it was a good combo. It was a new combo, in fact. So let's release this game. Uh, no, I don't want a new office. This is another thing. Try to stay in the garage for as much possible. Save up enough capital to actually fund yourself to get good staff and to train them for the next bit. And also remember to stick with your shitty game engine. Do not keep updating your engine every time something new happens. Save up a shit ton of money and then spend a lot of money on updating a new game engine when you need it. I've done a lot of work on my shitty five feature game engine. So keep in mind, you do not need an advanced game engine at this stage or even for a while. So let's have a see how it did, all right? Reviews, eight. As you can see, this is probably not the best game that's ever been created, but it's also very enjoyable. Mmm. Cheese and bacon shapes are tasty. You guys should have one. Just... Oh, it won't go on the microphone. Oh well, you can't have it. So as you can see, the reviews for this game were good. Now, this doesn't mean that it's the best game ever, because as you can see, it's only 8, 7s, and 6s. Why aren't there uh, 10s? Why aren't there 9s? Now this is where the final bit comes in, and I would point at it with my mouse, but Bandicam doesn't like recording my mouse for whatever reason in this feature. What it is, is it is the design to technology ratio. The higher the design to technology ratio, the higher your review scores will be calculated according to the raw data for the review algorithm. There is also a page that describes the review algorithm, which is linked to this page, which once again is in the description. Feel free to look at that if you want to and try and figure out how it works. So in reality, what we've done is because we've achieved good slider balance, good uh, marketing to the right people, and good, um, what was it? Yes, good platform and genre combo, we've gotten about 75% of what you need for a good game. 
the design and technology balance is something else. So since we didn't have that, we couldn't get nines and tens. But it also means we're going to get good selling. Not the greatest because the reviews aren't fantastic, but we're certainly going to get enough to cover the cost. And because we used a shitty engine, we've basically just paid for it. It's basically just paid for itself right now. So you have a look at that game. That game cost 76k to develop and earned us 196 first week. That's 120k profit, profit right off the bat. It doesn't need to sell well, we've just paid for our monthly costs for probably a year or something on that, and we're even going to pay for some more. So that's how you make a successful game. The business design aspect is something that I'm still working on myself. But all you need to do to make a good game, as I mentioned, is go away Aquilarids. I know you're going to be watching this video, don't talk to me while I'm recording. Even though you don't know, all you need is information. Information, which I will provide to you in the description. I'd like to thank you for watching this, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful, and that in future you can use this information to actually make good games. Now, if you're one of those people who doesn't like uh, having the answers handed to you, and I don't consider it uh, having the answers handed to you, it's doing your research which is completely legitimate, and you like to do it yourself, good for you. Feel free to do it, but you are probably going to have trouble making enough hits to actually do yourself good in the next area. So consider going to the description, at least looking at how the reviews are calculated so you can work on that. My name is ZavierMan117. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it interesting. I will see you guys when I next do a video. Until then, I leave you. Goodbye.